Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, International Watercolor Masters 2022. I am thrilled to be a part of this and very happy that David and Tara asked me to join in. I'm going to be doing a cityscape for you today. Um, there's a picture of it that should be showing on your screen. Uh, this is a little more complex. There's signage and lights, and so we're going to be doing this in steps, but you will see the entire process of the painting. Now, like uh, Pasqualino, I do um, portraits, I do still lifes, and cityscapes. Unlike Pasqualino, I never shut up, so I will be talking <laughs> through this whole thing. So, okay, um, so let's get started. Here is my, what I call my masking plan, okay? And how I come up with that is, when I'm looking at my reference photo, I find a large area of darks, okay? What's the largest area of darks? Then I mask off everything that's lighter than that. So I paint dark to light. I don't paint light to dark, okay? So I'm gonna get my darks done, my whites are already masked, so I've already got both ends of the spectrum done. Then you get to play in the middle, which is what we all like, right? As watercolors, we're happy in the middle. So anyway, we'll get going. Um, <clears throat> my first strokes are basically, I'll show you my palette here. Um, this is Quinn Gold, Quinn Rose, both Daniel Smith, Cobalt Blue, and Antwerp Blue, Lamp Black. Those were all Windsor Newton, okay? It's a very short little palette, easy to memorize. So I'm going to pull in first to my Quinn Gold, and I'm going to pull out a lot of pigment. The paper is dry, it's not wet. And pull, pull, this has been drying all the way since New York, so it's going to take a minute to get it going here. Okay, see I'm pulling it out towards almost brown gold. I really want a lot of pigment. Okay, and here's where my taxi is, so I'm going to go right down through there. Nice vertical stripes top to bottom. And so I don't water things down too much. I'm not gonna keep rinsing in between. I'm gonna go into my rose now. Go along the edge. Okay, both sides. I think I'm gonna put a little gold in the middle there. And then a little here on the edge. This is done very quickly so the colors can all meld together on the paper. Okay, I'm going to go into my gold one more time and just do this little stripe through here just to break up that rose a little bit. Now I'm going to go into my Antwerp because I want this to be dark, so that's my dark blue. Pull, pull, pull. Antwerp is a beautiful color. If any of you are landscape painters, it makes the most gorgeous greens and beautiful violets as well. Okay. <clears throat> go. All right. Now, this is a trick when you do this. Um, the gold, for some reason, always kind of gets, uh, it dries a little lighter and a little faster. So go into it one more time while everything's still wet. And again, get it, try and get it to more of a deep brown gold. Okay, there we go. Okay. Now I'm going to take my, everybody pronounces these different, I call them hake brushes, okay? You hold it right up where the little holes are, okay? And we're just going to do a little sweep, just to blend these colors together. Hmm? Yes, the brush is dry. <clears throat> I never put these, the only time they get wet is when I do this blending. They don't go into water, I never clean them, this is how I clean them. I just scrub them on a towel. But you should barely hear it whisper over the surface. If, you're, if it's going thud, 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 you're hitting it too hard. Because you just want these to blend at the edges. You don't want to mix it all because then it'll just be brown. I'm going to knock that edge off. Okay, so that's it. That's step one. It's pretty easy. The masking is the hardest part. That's where you do your slow planning. And then you can have fun and paint quickly. Okay, so I did it, I did it five, six times, <laughs> and it took me, I don't know, a few days. Um, where can I drop these? Is this carpet okay? Is it okay? Yes, just masking fluid. I use the brush. 
Okay, so here it is dry. Okay, and the masking is still on it. Okay, and I need my reference photo. Here we go. All right, so now I'm going to look, and I'm going to see where my darker darks are. In other words, what's darker than this initial target dark I did? So I'm just, this is easy. This is just lamp black. That's all there is to it. That's lamp black on the side here. So it's under here where the lights are. That's why you got to do all these lights, all the little bulbs. And I'm using a fairly big brush. I don't use a lot of small, small, fussy brushes. This is like one of the ones I use most of the time. And let me see. I'm looking. Some of the people are going to be painted in with this. He's light. Let's do these guys back here. And all these figures are just kind of abstract. So you don't have to worry that, you know, they look exactly like a person yet. They're not going to have little faces or anything. Okay. And right sky right here. Okay. Just some quick little, you know, almost like calligraphy work. We're just kind of throwing things together here. Now here, we're going to do the windows of the cab. There's a few light spots left in there. <clears throat> Now, obviously, at home, I just wait for these to dry in between. I don't do six steps. <laughs> That's for demo purposes. Well, David told me, I said, a cityscape in 55 minutes, and I've done them before. I was just teasing him, but he said, yeah, just paint faster. <laughs> okay, and then around the tire. And then always connect your car to the ground. It helps it look like it's sitting there, not floating. <clears throat> okay. And let's see. Right around this guy. Now, if, the, if there's a central figure in your cityscape, like someone who's walking that's up close or whatnot, and they're important to the scene, then you have to pay more attention. But when you have crowds of people in the background, just paint, you know, you can put them in, you can even lift them out later. It's not that important. The bottom part of this sign. And I'm just looking for the darkest darks in this reference photo. And the beauty part is there's really no messing this up. There's, you're just getting in some darks. I'm going to soften this edge a little bit. There we go. And down this. All right. So I would just continue with, here's his leg. Right up here. around all this signage, and it starts right here at the edge of that sign. Now, because around the um, cat sign is the red lights, and it's a little bit lighter, so I'm going to go to a slightly smaller brush, and I'm going to go into my rose and my gold, put a little of my black in there, so it's more of a reddish dark and then go into just do that. Here we go. And add some water in places, use more paint in other places. It just gives a variant of, you know, um, thickness of paint value as you go around the sign. Okay. Here we go. And in the sign, I want a little Antwerp. And I don't care that that red blends in with this a little bit, because remember, these are light, so they're glowy, and when something's glowy, it's going to be soft-edged. Okay, and around our little cat singer, 
she's all masked off also. Okay. And then right in here. All right. Okay, so that is step two done. And here that is dry. You see why if we waited for all these to dry, we'd be here all day. So here's the darks dry. Okay, and it gives a nice, um, you can see all the darks and lights. You still see all the colors coming through. So that's what you want to see. Okay, now we're just going to work on our cab. Do not paint cabs at night bright canary yellow. It is wrong. <laughs> it is just wrong. So we're going to do the, the whole underside, basically, the last panel, or whatever you call it, on the cab. And I'm just adding water as I go up the side, just again for that little variance of value, little change. Okay. And then inside the wheel well. And down the front. Okay, now while this is wet, this is one time I go to a smaller brush. I'm going to add up, uh, make a violet with my Antwerp and my rose. Okay, and right along the bottom, I'm just using the tip of my brush just to let that bleed up into the gold a little bit. You can even tilt your paper. It just helps it look like a rounded edge where it rounds down into the dark. Here. Okay. So then we can continue. Now up top here, it's darker also at the door. There's some lighter reflections along the, the mid of the panel of the door, so we're going to avoid those for a minute. Because that's what's going to look like, you know, that's speeding through a street with light shining on it. Okay. Here we go. Now, as I was saying before, when the people are the star, you have to kind of pay more attention if there's a central figure. In this painting, it's the lights and the cab. Those are the stars. That's why I'm not paying attention so much to the people. You have to kind of decide what you're, you want your viewer to look at. These are the little lights shining on the windshield, the red lights that are up here that you can't see yet. Okay. Then I take just a little, and I'm not pressing hard, I'm just going to lift it a little bit just so they stay glowy and it doesn't turn too dark, the red. And I'm going into black to do my signs here. Okay. I don't have lettering, but I'm, I know basically what these say. It's just a big, and then a T, and then taxi. And it doesn't have to be neat because it's speeding by, so we don't, you don't want to read every letter. It doesn't make sense. You wouldn't be able to. Okay. I'll put a little gold in the middle, let that bleed out. Same between these. And I can always letter that a little more carefully at the end if I want. I just want to get those darks established where they are. Okay, let's go up to the hood, because that is also dark, or darker. And the good thing about painting dark to light is, as you work through your painting and you get near the end to the lights, you have all this room to work with, because if you paint over dark, it's just going to get darker. So you don't have to worry about it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Throw my brush away. I got another one. Don't worry about it. I got two. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. So now I'm going to go into a lighter yellow. Let it join up with this one I did earlier. When I say yellow, it's my gold. Throw brushes at the audience. It's not a good idea. Okay. There. So we're getting a good um, start on this already. I can work now a little over here, maybe in my signage or something. This is where I kind of, like it might not be perfect on the next one because this I was able to let dry in my studio, so I didn't have to move into this. But let's work on our cat. Let's get her going. So she's just a light, kind of gray all over the place, but she's got this one paw sticking up with the red nails. I love this picture. Cats is one of my favorites. Okay. Water, and then we'll go into gray, do her fur. Okay. Her hair the ears and again she's not going to be super detailed either because she's not the star either believe it or not even though it's a musical okay I'm gonna go into my pink start getting some other colors in here this is rose and lighter and it can blend into this furry part of her collar and there we go. And there's some very, very light, light pink over on this side. There we go. Soften the edge. Whenever I soften an edge, I just put it in water, then pull it off with my fingers. And that gives you a nice soft edge. All right. Um, I'm going to dry this cab and get this finished. Now we're going to go into our very pale golds to finish off this middle part of the taxi. So I'm just going to paint right over that. Or if you want, you can even use a big, and there's my other big brush. You can use a big brush and go over the entire taxi. Because again, anything I put over this dark is just going to get darker. So that's okay too. And it's light right here. And there's this dark part right under that little signage that's at the top of the cab. The bubbles. Okay, so we're avoiding everything. Um, we're just avoiding the headlight. And leave a couple white shiny marks in your cab. It doesn't matter where. Nobody's going to know but you where they were. <laughs> People get so upset when they cover something by mistake. And chances are no one's going to know about it but you. It's the same thing when you do hair or clothing. People get all tied up about one wrinkle in a shirt. And I'm like, really? You think anybody's going to know about that but you? OK. Now while that's drying, we can go into our hubcap. So for this, I use my cobalt. Find a clean spot here. I use the big, big trays at home, so it's always a challenge. Okay, so this is just um, a cobalt mixture of, um, of a violet, kind of a muddy violet. You don't want it too pretty when it's in the hubcap. 
And I'm painting over that black I did before also and bringing some of that in because it dulls it even more, which looks good. And then just finish off the little holes, <coughs> I guess you call them, that are in the, the hubcaps. Okay, and we got one more wash to do over that. So that's that. That's pretty much the tax. Oh, I got to do the top. Let me do a little of the bubble for you. So I'm going to add a little more pink to that same cobalt, muddy violet. Okay. And I'm just going to go around the edges because it's lit up at night and it's going to be white or whitish in parts. So I'm just going to go around the edge, water, pull, and soften. And that gives it like that nice glow. Okay, and down below here. I'm painting our sign. Okay. I'll, finish, I'll show you the hubcap on the next one. So there's that one. And here's our cab, all finished. But I do have one more wash on the hubcap, so I was right. I don't always call, I did this these weeks ago, so <laughs> trying to remember what I did. Okay, so I'm mixing up a lighter cobalt. Now again, just leave a few shiny spots. Paint over everything you did before, but leave just a couple little shiny spots on it. And I'm going over the tire as well. Okay, so that finishes the hubcap. Now I'm going to start um, on my background here. So I'm going to do my lights first. Now what I want to mix here is almost a cad red, so it's going to be a lot of gold, a little bit of rose. Now again, because I've already done all this dark, dark black, I don't have to sit there and do this between, between all the little dots. I can just do this and paint in my red. In fact, the outside is red as well, so I'm going to just do the whole thing. But now you're going to do this in sections because you want it to stay wet, and I'll show you why in a sec. Because the outside is darker than the inside. The inside lights, I mean, are lighter. So we're just going to go right on the inside and just pull some of those back out. Like so. Okay, and that gives it the, you know, where it's just lighter inside than outside. So just do a little section at a time, whatever you can handle. And then just go in. Make sure you're just doing the inside more than, don't try to take too much off the outside or they're just going to look the same. <clears throat> and I do occasionally use cad red and cad yellow in my cityscapes, but mostly if I have a lot of tail lights going on, like shining at night, you really kind of need those colors for that. This red isn't quite bright enough. Okay. All right. Get out of the cats. And just dot, dot, dot. Don't have to get everyone, just get some. Okay? It's a lot easier than doing one dot at a time and painting in that red. Okay, a little more gold. Okay, same with here. We have some more over here. Just a couple on the sides. There we go. All right. Now done under here, it's actually darker, so we can just do our red and leave it. We don't have to pick any of it out. <clears throat>
Okay. Now, if you start picking up, I just started, and that's what made me to tell you. If you start picking up too much black from underneath, make sure you clean your brush and get some more red on there. Don't keep going. There we go. All right. Now I'm just going to go in where that got a little black there. I don't want it too dark. All right. Now we're going to go into the doors, which are just gold. All right, starting with this marquee over here. There we go. The inside is kind of a dark red, so I'm going to go in. I'm doing that right now because I don't care if it bleeds into the gold a little bit. <clears throat> Again, this is not anything that's not part of the story story, like a big part of the story. I want to blend a little bit. I don't want any sharp edges or colors. So I kind of paint a lot of wet into wet. There we go. Let's see, more gold. So now I'm just going to move my way across the doorways. Now it's going to be a darker gold on top where it's under the canopy. So I'm going to add a little gold to that and do this whole arch first. And it's almost purple. It's like it's kind of like our taxi cab. So I'm going to go into that that purple I mixed and run it, just drop it in there here and there. So that's not as bright as what I'm going to do on the sides down the doors. Okay. There we go. And again, if you don't have the shine in the right place <laughs> on the door, nobody's going to know. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not a photorealistic painter. My motto is, nobody's going to know. Okay, more water. And I'm just following along, looking at my sketch, or my um, reference photo. It's really easy. The drawing is hard, the masking is a little lengthy, it's really not too bad. It looks much worse than what it is. But then you get to just move your brush and have fun, you know, and once the masking comes off, everything is there. All your pieces are there, you just gotta enjoy and paint them in. Okay, up here. Okay, this is still a little light up here, so I'm going to go over one more time with my purple. Drop some in. It comes down a little bit to some of these. All right. Let's go down to the street. Some pink. Now, I've also, when I did my mask, I spattered some into the street, so we'll have some sparkle at the end. Um, that's still on, that's the only masking that's still on there. And let's go into blue. Right. This is just some gray in my, I mean, everything's mixing in my palette, which I love. It's called, I call it my miracle mud, and I use it just for neutral areas. <clears throat> like between all these people's feet. It's a nice neutral gray in the background, doesn't really pull the eye.
I took a class a long, long time ago from Ron Ranson. Someone asked him why he hardly ever cleans his palette. <laughs> and he said, I paid for that paint. <laughs> I thought that was a brilliant answer. <laughs> okay, so we're looking good. I'm going to get a little, some of my people started here. Now you can just pick, again, colors, whatever you want for the, the coats, the outfits, whatever. This is entirely up to you. There's this little lady standing here, so I'll give her a little red coat, some gold, and then I'll just drop some rose into it in places. And there we go. And I'll just take a little corner of this, oh, get a little circle, and just pop her face out of the middle. down into her pants. Okay. So just, you know, pick and choose. Now you got a lot of yellow behind the people, so I wouldn't go with a lot of gold or anything, you know, clothes-wise, because they'll just blend. Besides, this is New York. Everybody practically is all in gray and black. <laughs> if you've been, you know what I mean. I remember when I moved there, I was only like 21, and I was like, how come nobody wears colors? <clears throat> okay, I'm just now, these guys were all big, a, a big clump of black, so I'm just gonna define some of them and set them apart from the others. Paint in the rest of there. This was a rainy night, so everybody was in raincoats and such. It was also freezing. By the way, if you're ever in New York, the best time to take pictures in Times Square is to go out at like 2 in the morning. I mean, this wasn't because I wanted to catch crowds going into this place, but yeah, if you want just Times Square pictures with just not so many people. Okay, let's get this guy up front. I'm just going to give him a gray hoodie. Now let's just go and give everybody some faces. All right, let's see, am I missing anybody right here? Okay. All right. I'm going to get some orange going here. So now this is mostly Quinn Gold with a little red. And there's these bright orange things in the windows right here. Just get some pale yellow. Right down the middle. You're just setting things off in these windows now from the little shapes and you know they're reflecting things out here is what you're actually painting. Okay. A lot of these shapes in the background are very abstract, so you don't have to worry about again about perfection or what they are. 
when you step back, it looks like what it's supposed to look like. And some of you don't even know what they really are, and it doesn't matter. It just makes sense. You know, it's like, okay, well, that's... Okay. Then there's this little bit of pavement under this guy that I missed. Okay, let's start our signs over on this side. So again, into my rows. Right in here into the middle. Just gonna pull a little out. There we go. That goes up here. And all the way down here. It says mama something, I don't even know what it says. Okay, up top we got yellow. There we go. Paper's bent, there we go. And again, I'm just going to drop a little purple because it's way up at the corner. We don't want a bright gold up there. So we got more back here behind this person. She's still pretty wet though, but we'll take a shot. Let's see if I can get around her. See, my little brushes are just for the kind of the very end when I'm doing all these little tiny things in the background. But if I was to try and do that initial wash with these, there's no way it would work. Just my gold again. It's only trouble with a limited palette. You sound redundant when you're telling people what colors you're using. Funniest story from every, any workshop I've ever been to. We had this lady in, I wasn't teaching, I was just attending, and there was this lady in our class, and this poor instructor, every two seconds, what color is that? What brush is that? What color is that? And um, finally, one of the women in the class goes, it's not the car, it's the driver. In other words, <laughs> stop asking. <laughs> Funniest thing. Got a good laugh out of everybody, including the instructor. He thought it was funny. That's a nice part about a limited palette. Nobody asked me much. I don't get asked that. They can see where I'm going in my palette, what color I'm going for, and like, oh, well, that's the gold. I'm gonna get a better brush. I hate this little brush. Here we go. It's got a point on it, but it's a very strange point. Okay, so now we're just gonna get a little bit of line work just into these doors. Here. And don't do all of them. Um, like when Pasqualina was doing his windows, do you see how they were, they were all different? They were all varied and interesting. When you do something too repetitive all the way across the painting, it gets a little boring. So I thought that was really good. And don't ever do all your windows square. Triple, quadruple boring. <laughs> and judges think so too, trust me. Okay, now we got just a little red and blue going on down here, so I just got some of my, my rustic looking red. Okay, 
some glue. I'm going to my cobalt, but a little stronger. Now I have that blue over here, way on the edge, so I'm gonna have to put it somewhere else, right? So let's find a spot. This will be good for somebody's clothing or something. How about this guy? You gotta have that little repetition. You can't have a color in just one spot, especially at the edge, because it'll draw somebody's eye over there and be like, why is that just at the edge? Let's do it. His legs while we're at it. Okay. And I didn't do my cat lady yet on this one for some reason. So let's get her started. Yeah, when you're doing these in a series, you can easily lose track. You're like, did I do that? I don't remember. Let's get her paw. Here we go. Ears. Down here, okay. All right, and the pink. All right. Yeah, let's go to the black. Another spot to put a little of that cobalt, just so it doesn't look so all by itself. Okay, and then again, the pink down into the bottom here. soften okay now we got to show off our writing here of our cats so let's read around our letters and you can always mask off your letters if you're not comfortable painting around them because that people could notice, let's face it. People know what the letter S looks like. Okay, we're gonna paint right over this that we did before. But that's how I start to make things gel together is I just paint over them again with whatever color I'm in this time. Okay, there's our T. Straighten out our T. Okay, let's see if we can go back into her. And here we go. Okay, I'm gonna give her kind of a pink face because she has makeup on, so her face is not, it's almost white, you know, but. And her lips and nose are darker, so you can go right over those. And I'm just going to drop a little water into it just to lighten it up a little. Okay, so wait for her to dry. Meanwhile, we can put our orange in and our lights here. over here. She is still got a lot of water on her. Okay. Okay, and this is just a a light gray. Okay. 
Now we're going to fuss with this orange and red that's going on in these windows here. Okay, and the middle is yellow, so I'm just going to go in with some water, starting in the middle, and let that bleed in a little bit. Kind of getting down to the little bit of detail. And okay, this is red. So I don't know what all these little lights and reflections are, so that's what I'm saying, don't. If you don't know and you were there taking the picture, who's gonna know that's looking at your painting? Because I don't know what was out here that was shining in these windows. There we go. We doing up there okay we could probably work on her outfit a little more okay I'm just gonna do a little dry brush since she's wearing fur so I just took some of my paint off and I'll just go right over the dark I did before You don't have to get super fussy to get the idea of what you're trying to show people. That's impressionist and painting right there. You don't have to worry about every little nuance and detail. It's an impression of what you saw. Okay. Yep, gold. Okay, going back into her hair. Her eyebrows. And her nose. And some red lips. Again, just touch, touch. Something's too dark. This is the old cat, I think, the sad one. I'm guessing. You know the name? I heard it over here. Okay. Yes. I've got a question from someone watching online. They're asking whether any of your watercolors are granulated. Only my cobalt. Only cobalt. That's why it's in my palette. <laughs> it's the only one that does. Okay, so there's that. We're getting near the end here. So I've already done a lot of this already, but here's like the red done and the. She's still not done in this one. See, I skipped over her many times. <laughs> she's just waiting for the last hurrah, I guess. But anyway, um, so I just continue on with my people and all that, but this I already did for you on that step. So the only thing I didn't do is you could finish your lettering up here at the top, which is just a little liner in black. 
so, something New York backwards because it's shining in the light. Bing, 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 bing. And don't get super crazy with your lettering, especially at the corner. Nobody is going to be looking up there. You don't want them to look up there. You certainly don't want them to stay up there. <laughs> they can glance and come back, but... Okay, so I would do her and finish the people like everything I already did in the last one you saw, so that's a better version of that. Okay, so here's the finish. She's done. <laughs> Amazing. But I'll, here, all I would do is take off all the sparkle in the street, okay, which is that, that spattered masking. Okay, and we're going to do that in my class tomorrow, so... I'll show you how to do that and get it right where you want it to go. It doesn't go all over the place. But um, so here's the finished work. All the masking is off and the full color. Here's your photo reference. And that is the New York City scene. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there you go.